Hey, what's going on YouTube and welcome to this video on how to configure Cisco Jabber with your mobile device. Now I'm making this video based on some questions I've received from other people where they're saying that it works on their Windows device, for example, but having trouble getting it on their iPhone or Android device. So for this video, I'll show you some examples on how to get that set up. And also I'll use the free lab beta in case you want to follow along. And for the phone specifically, I'm going to use my Android since I can use Chromecast to stream the video feed from my phone directly to my capture card. So it'll be, from a visual standpoint, it'll be a lot easier to demonstrate. So with that said, uh, let's get going. And first thing I'm gonna do is just log into the call manager. And if we go over to device and phone, choose find here. Uh, here's all the devices we have. Now, initially when we, if you went through the original video uh, where we set up the client services framework for the first time, that was based on the Windows system. So as you can see here with YouTube user D, we are signed in, registered. And if we click on it, the device type is Cisco Unified Client Services Framework. So when you build the Windows version, that's the, and to add a new device, this is the type you choose. And then you can give it any device name that you want and associate the user ID to that phone. Now, based on what I said in the beginning, most of you are probably already at this stage. So what I wanted to point out then is for each mobile device, you need to make sure you have the correct device type and format for that particular endpoint. So for example, I'm gonna be using the Android device. So you can see here, I already have the users created and devices created, but I just wanna show you how to create them yourself as well. So here I have YouTube user A and through D for Android. And notice that the device name begins with a capital B-O-T. That's the main uh, takeaway to keep in mind is when you create a new device and choose Cisco dual mode for Android. Make sure that the device name begins with a capital BOT and then anything else after that can be uppercase, lowercase, just like with the client service framework, it can be whatever you want. But the, the main thing is make sure that it, it starts with BOT and of course assign the uh, user ID, the owner user ID to the device and extension just like you would any other endpoint. So now if we go back and if we go down a little bit, these are the YouTube user A4 through D for iPad. And as you can see with the pattern, it begins with a capital tab, T-A-B. So whenever you're setting up a Cisco Jabber client for iPads, uh, you select the product type of Cisco Jabber for tablet, but then make sure that the device name starts with T-A-B and then anything else behind that, uh, you can use whatever you want. And of course, just like the other ones, make sure you set the user ID and give it the extension. And finally, for the iPhone, you can see here we've got YouTube user A through D, and it begins with TCT. So when you use the Cisco dual mode for iPhone, then make sure that the device name starts with TCT give it the username and extension. And the YouTube user A through D in my home lab environment here, I have set uh, through LDAP, but as you can see, it looks like uh, some other people have, before I made this video, have already gone in here and have tried this themselves, um, signing onto the VPN and creating their own, which you can certainly do that as well. So once you have this set up now we can go ahead and move on to setting up the device mobile device itself all right so the first thing that i'm going to do here is i'm going to connect to the freelab vpn for this demonstration All right, and now that we are connected, 
I'm going to launch Cisco Jabber and assuming you do not have the service records already set up what we're going to do is go to the advanced settings and for connect to server we're going to choose manually and if you're on version 8 or lower you're going to use this default one here where it says CUCM I am in presence but in our case since we're using 11.5 we're going to choose the Cisco Communication Manager 9 plus and then put the IP address of your publisher, subscriber, whatever you're using for your um, endpoints to register to. In my lab environment, it's going to be the publisher, so we'll put in the IP 192.168.202.211. And we'll choose OK. Now you can see it, it says sign into CM server, and for the username, we'll say YouTube D at free lab dot local continue and now we have we're prompted for the CUCM pub we'll say continue certificate for the subscriber we'll continue with that and now we'll put in our password And we're prompted again for the CUCM IMP server itself. So we'll continue there. And again for the free lab. And uh, the VCSE, that's for the, v, uh, the expressway, which we're not using in this example or this video. So now let's see here. So we're currently signed in with instant messaging. The phone service is hanging and I have had a few ins when I'm using the VPN on my phone, sometimes I do have to reconnect. It's working now because uh, you can see the icon popped up there. It's just pretty slow. And whenever it does updates in the background, I mean, this is an old phone, so. All right, so I'm just going to sign out real quick and sign back in. All right. So I can say slow DSL and VPN sometimes don't go well together, but uh, as you can see, so now we've got the instant messaging, the phone services, and for the voicemail, we can just manually set this up. It's, it, you can see it already has the IP. It's just asking for the username and password. So this will be YouTube D. And if you saw the previous videos, we made the password one, two, three. And we'll accept the CUC VM1, that's Unity Connection Certificate. And obviously, I am having connectivity issues. Um, so let me sign out again. I would switch the Wi-Fi on here to my other internet connection, but you have to be on the same network to stream. So with Chromecast here to my capture card, so. All right, so another thing to try to is just disconnect from the VPN and reconnect. And again, this you, you don't have to do this VPN for your location. This is just for my home lab that I'm sharing with everybody.
All right, so let's try this again. Okay, there we go. So now all of them are signed in. So you can see here we don't have any voice messages, but everything is now connected. And if we go back over and refresh our devices here, now you can see the YouTube Android is now registered. So for an example here, I mean, just for demonstration then, what we can do is, let me sign out of here. We'll reset Jabber. And I'll sign in as uh, YouTube user A. And so now if we go to chat with YouTube user D. Uh, now we see we have a notification in the chats. And then if you want, see, so we'll go to our contacts. And you can see that um, we now have an incoming call from YouTube user D. So you can see it went to voicemail, and when I hang it up, you can see there was the reply message saying that was busy. So again, hopefully this clears up some of the basics as far as how to get this set up. Um, despite my VPN issues, again, if you're on a local LAN with a stable connection, you're not going to run into those little uh, bumps that I did. but um, and then, likewise, if you have the service record set up, then it's even more straightforward because uh, if I reset Jabber here uh, with service records, then all you have to do is say uh, YouTube D at freelab.local, continue. And it should pull all the information automatically. So again, we'll accept everything. Sign in. And there we go. And again, you have to manually set up the username for the voicemail. But it already has the IP in there based on the service profile we set up in a previous video. Forgot already. <laughs>
Passwords one, two, three. And there we go. All right. So uh, again, I hopefully this answers some of your questions from a basic level and get you started. So if you have any questions, let me know. And as always, thank you for watching, and I will see you guys in the next video.